Hello, good people. Thank you for pressing play. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being available. Thank you to those of you who share your story. Thank you for your bravery and your courage. It takes a strength from God to speak up. But I want to encourage everyone to continue sharing. And those of you who are not, please speak up and speak out. If there's anything that you know that could help someone else be free, to help set others free, please say something. I want to talk to those of you who are struggling with forgiveness today. I too have been struggling. I actually reached out to Danny yesterday and said, Danny, I'm having a hard time today forgiving the ex-sociopath. And I just need some encouragement because I have these moments where I think about the horrible thing that this person has done to children. I think about the predator that he really is and how people cover up, um, how the wicked just cover up the sins of one another. <clears throat> Excuse me. And sometimes I get angry and I ask God, what are you doing? Uh, why do these people keep moving about? I'm not asking God to kill them. I'm just asking God to expose them in a way where they cannot run, where they have to live in the shame that they have created for other people. Because remember, they've offended other people or trespassed against other people in a way where people have to battle with shame. And so I do. I pray that for them. I visit the book of Psalms and I pray like David oftentimes. I know I talk about forgiveness a lot. And I still believe forgiveness is important, but I also believe like faith, forgiveness is a journey. I'm still on that journey. Forgiveness takes you off the hook. Therefore, this is why it is important. But I've heard many stories lately, and one specifically about the ex sociopath circle that got me to thinking God moves in a way that we don't understand, but when he moves, he makes it clear that it is his move. It is his checkmate. So, oh my gosh, I cannot count how many people have reached out to me to tell me that a narc that they know has died suddenly. Again, my preference would be that they wouldn't die, but that they would live a life full of shame. But that's what they do anyway, right? Because all they do is lie. They lie and they live in a false reality. So they um, are already in a life of shame. They're ashamed of who they are. They can never be themselves. So when I heard the story that I heard, I thought about many other people telling me about the narcs dying. And I thought, man, death has visited God's Judgment has visited the ex sociopath circle. Not only visited, it's just getting started. And so I'm reminded that I need to stay out of the way. I need to remain on the journey that I was on, mind my business, and allow God to move. A lady sat on my couch that I know. I was appalled at the story that I heard. I really wanted to tell her to get out of my home. I prayed over my home when she left. And um, I was absolutely disgusted at the display of gloating in wicked behavior that was present in my home. Why was this person in my home? Because the person is a, a relative, okay? She told me that she slept with a guy from the ex sociopaths circle. This guy is married with children. And I thought, okay, she said, well, I don't have any qualms about it. I've always wanted to do it. We've always loved each other. I said, yeah, but he's married to someone else. So does he really love you? You know, did he love you? He couldn't love you because he's married to someone else. So apparently you weren't the one. But nonetheless, 
They've always wanted to sleep together. So on the night before her brother's wedding, her brother made a way for them to do just that in his bed where he's going to bring his new wife. The brother has a host of issues with pedophilia and other things his, his himself. So that's neither here nor there right now. So the brother made a way for them to sleep together. And less than 30 days later, this man dies suddenly. What happened during his death? Everyone sang his praises. They said how he was such a good family man, a good husband, a good this and that. While well, here it is, they all, all of the friends that were there, including the sociopath, knew that this person was sleeping with the sister of the groom, their friend, while away from his family. And they all covered it up. In her face was, oh, he loved his family. He loved you. He cared for his family. These are the lies that the wicked tell as they continue to perpetuate wickedness behind closed doors. And everyone in that circle knew what happened and they were okay with that. It was absolutely disgusting. But at the moment that she told me the person died, I said, God is moving. I'm sad for the family, but I understand what's taking place. God is moving and he will move swiftly. Some of you get to hear about these stories and well, many of you do. I can't say that I know anyone who hasn't heard what happened when calamity strikes a narcissist, when God's wrath visits the narcissist. Sometimes it's delayed because you're in the way and sometimes it's delayed because he's gracious and giving them an opportunity to change. But when God visits their circles, he wipes them clean out. Hear what I'm saying because this is what God is doing in the earth right now. So if you're concerned about if they're getting away with what they're doing, they are not. People may cover it up and other wicked people may work in tandem. But trust me, God sees all and he knows all. Sometimes the delay is protecting other innocent people also who are in the way. But when he strikes, he strikes at the right time. And when you hear about it, you know that that was the right time. So hold steadfast to his word. Dive deep into Psalms to help give you comfort and know that God is at work. He hasn't forgotten you, so continue exposing the wicked. Do not enable the wicked. Do not hide their stories. Do not hide any of their behavior. Tell it all, expose it all, and be true to who you are in Christ. God bless you. Take good care of yourselves. I love you.